Now that the drawing has been started, remember that it starts with a C size sheet. We're going to need to change that sheet size to an A size sheet. Most of the sheets that you're going to create are A size sheets. So let's go ahead and edit the sheet. Right mouse click in the browser window whenever we want to change things. Change it to A size. Choose OK. ANSI large, we're going to delete and remember that under drawing resources, we're going to choose title block and insert the ANSI A title block. Now, when we create a sheet set, this is a multiple drawing sheet, the first sheet needs to be the assembly, the exploded assembly or the assembled assembly. And then subsequent sheets will show the details of the individual parts. So I'm going to start with the exploded assembly, second sheet will be the assembled assembly, uh, third sheet will be a detail of one of the parts. And so we'll end up with multiple sheets, could be up to four sheets for this particular drawing packet. I'll then show you how to save your work and then how to create the PDF file for all the sheets at once. I'll also do the scale command which is by adding text. So previously what we did was we did an iProperties, change the title and work from there. What we'll do now is we'll just put text in the title block as needed for these particular drawings. So under annotate I'm going to go ahead and use the text tool. I'll start with the scale factor and my scale factor is going to be 1 to 1. So I'm going to do everything full size. The title, I'm going to change the size of the text to 0.24 and we'll call this puzzle blocks. So it's pretty easy just to put the text in where you need it. You definitely need to have the date, the scale, the sheet, the title, um, and your name associated with it. We're now ready to place the exploded assembly and the parts list. So we're going to go back to the Place Views tab and we're going to choose our base view. Now our base view is not going to be the IAM, it's going to be the IPN because we want the exploded assembly. Now if I do the exploded assembly and it looks like this, that doesn't look very good. So I'm going to do an ISO top right of the exploded assembly. Now I may have to adjust scale and I may have to adjust um, position based on that size of the object. But I'm kind of liking what I'm seeing here for the position of the object. So whenever we do the exploded assembly, we want to make sure, and by the way, when it starts to project them, just hit the escape key and stop. When we do the, ex the first view, we want to use the IPN, which is the exploded, and we want to create um, an ISO top right or left to get the appropriate view. Remember, as we can edit these particular views, so we're going to edit the view, and we're going to shade this one. Why? Because exploded assemblies look much better shaded than they do uh, unshaded. Now we're ready to put a parts list in and some balloons to indicate what the parts are. Parts lists are found under Annotate. Over on the right hand side they'll choose a parts list. Now the parts list can be created from the assembly file, doesn't have to be created from the IPN. We'll choose OK and it's going to ask me, Do you, are you sure you really want to create the bill of materials? Yes. So the bill of materials I'm going to go ahead and create up here. Now I can shrink this bill of materials and adjust it. I've got to get the move command. There we go. Move it over so I don't have is large of squares associated with each of these items. 
So all I did was highlight and shrink by left mouse clicking, holding it, and shrink the, the window. So it shows me that block 1 and block 2 are my parts. I also need to create balloons. Now there's an automatic balloon creation tool. Works well, but it lines all the balloons up on one side. This gives you the ability to place the balloons where you'd like them. I just left mouse click and I can left mouse click as many times as I need as soon as I right mouse click and choose continue that fixes the balloon position. So I left mouse click the starting spot, left mouse click the first anchor, and then right mouse click and choose continue. So it's left mouse click, left mouse click, then right mouse click to anchor it. So it shows me which one is part one and which one is part two. You're done with sheet number one. Now I've got to create a brand new sheet. So I've got to create a second sheet. So we're over here now in the browser window. Right mouse click and say done. Under place views, I can choose new sheet. Now what's nice is that it copies my sheet that I was just working on, except it doesn't copy all the text. But I can go over and double click on sheet number one, copy the text and paste it in if I need it to, which I'll probably do here in a second. The second sheet I wanted to do is the assembled assembly. So I'm going to use the base view of the IAM and again it's going to be an ISO maybe I'll do a top left this time to show nope not really good top right is still the better view of the assembled assembly one view is all that's necessary edit the view shade it and choose OK could I have put this on the first sheet yes I could easily have fit this on the first sheet and if I could I would fit it on the first sheet, but I wanted to show you how to create the multiple sheets here. I'm going to double click back to sheet one. Now that I've got my view placed, there's nothing I need to do with this. I just need to put a title and a scale in. So sheet one, I'm going to go ahead and right mouse click and copy puzzle blocks. Double click on sheet two. Right mouse click and paste it. Back to sheet one. Oh, right mouse click, choose done. Back to sheet one. Take the one to one, copy it. Back to sheet two. Right mouse click, paste it. Perfect. Right mouse click, choose done. Now, I would almost do this at the very end after all your sheets are created and not do it intermediately like I just did because um, you can just move from sheet to sheet and paste it at that point. I need to create another new sheet. This time I'm going to detail part number one. So sheet number three is going to be the base view of part number one, but it's not on my list. So I'm going to need to go and find it. So I'm going to open an existing file. I need to find all, I need to find where that file is. Okay, it's under the student area. I need to pick block one or block two. I'll pick block one. We'll choose open. And this time I am going to do a top front right side. So I'm going to start with my front view. Project my right side and my top view. And my isometric. And right mouse click and create. I'll add the annotations. The dimensions that I need. Okay, I'll highlight and shade the, the isometric view. But again, do you want to put dimensions in all the views to ensure that there is a value to having them? 
but you also want to make it very clear where the dimensions go. and how they relate. Now I could probably get rid of this 0.75 because I got a 1.5 and a 2.25. So I can delete that particular dimension. And that is pretty well constrained at this point. I'll create a fourth sheet back to place views sheet number four base view we're gonna pick block number two front view right side view top view isometric view and create shade this one so we'll edit that view shade it and now I need to add my dimensions to this so it's going to be annotate dimension and if I have to I may adjust the view positions of these because I'm not liking exactly where they are so I'm going to kind of widen that out a little bit and so you, this one's going to require significantly more dimensions because of the complexity of the part and remember that we don't dimension hidden lines. That's the dashed lines. It is legal for me to cross extension lines. I cannot put an extension line through a dimension line, however. So this is pretty well dimensioned and now let's talk about the different sheets and how to uh, print them out. Now that I've got all my sheets done I'm going to go back to the place views. I'm going to save my work. Block assembly it's going to be a drawing sheet. Perfect. Notice that it automatically put the name in under drawing number, block assembly. I could then copy and paste all the scale factors and so forth. Matter of fact, the one to one is still there. That was the last one that I pasted. But now how do I print? Remember that I wanted a copy of the IDW so you've just done that, you've saved that, but I also want you to save it as a PDF. So you choose the export to PDF we're going to export the PDF but before you choose save hit the options button. When you're doing multiple drawing sheets you need to choose this options and say you want all the sheets to be printed as part of the PDF file. If you don't, then it only does the current sheet. So when you do a PDF of an assembly with multiple sheets, you want to choose all sheets. Options, all sheets, then hit save and it will create it. It will then show you the preview of all four sheets. Notice that it has sheet one through four. So sheet one was my exploded assembly, sheet two is my assembled assembly, sheet three is detail of part one, detail of part two. Remember that I need to update and uh, clean that up before I created the PDF file. Um, I should have shaded that one. But other than that, I just wanted to go through the basic process of how this is created. Um, 
Have fun creating your puzzle cubes and future projects.